Hey, 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 everyone. Hey, 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 it's your girl, Precious Williams. And I am the proud host of the Keeping It Real with the Hashtag Killer Pitchmaster Show, which, they, which shows every Sunday. I'm so delighted to be here with you. And I thank you all for coming each and every Sunday. I'm thankful to my existing guests and to the new ones that come every week. People come here to learn the true tea as it relates to pitching, to branding as it relates to communication skills, as it relates to really getting yourself out there, gaining visibility and things like that. And so today's show is, is entitled Hashtag True T, The Price of Success from the Inside Out. And the reason why I want to talk about this particular uh, issue today is because, as many of you know, a lot of us have been through the trauma, drama, and stress of life. A lot of us have made a lot of mistakes. And then there are sometimes you find yourself staying in those mistakes and not allowing yourself to walk out of them, to not allow God to do the work, to allow you to become that new creation. And I am very much in personal relationship with God. And the only reason I can come to you and tell you these things is because I have been helped in ways that, that defy logic. But before we even get there, why should you even listen to the killer pitch master? Who is Precious Williams, the killer pitch master? And I'm glad you asked. My name is precious. I'm named after my grandmother. I am a 13 time national elevator pitch champion. I have been featured on Shark Tank, CNN, Wall Street Journal, Forbes magazine, movies and documentaries and shows around the world. I'm an international professional speaker. I am a corporate trainer. I am an MC and host of many events. I, am, I understand networking to a level that most people don't. I understand how to build relationships so that you can monetize your network. And all of that came throughout my life. And it's only funny that I turned 42 um, almost a couple of weeks ago. And as I look back over my life, I realized that had I not created my own lane as the killer pitch master, no one would know who I am today. And so I think it's very important to all know that I come from the inner city of St. Louis, Missouri. I didn't grow up with contacts. I didn't grow up with media. I didn't grow up with all of those things that people assume that I had to have gotten to the level that I am today. And so as we do in every show, I want to know who's in the room and I speak to my guests. So if you're a speaker or an entrepreneur or if you're in corporate America, please let me know in the comments so I know that I'm speaking to the right crowd. If you're a speaker and entrepreneur or both, you can put both. You can be a speaker, entrepreneur, you can put corporate, nonprofit, foundation, whatever. But I want to make sure I'm speaking to the right people who are coming here for some unapologetic true tea on the speaking industry, on communications, securing corporate contracts, getting visible in a crowded marketplace. If you're here for all of that, once you put in those other comments, I want you to tell me that you're ready because we're going we're gonna to talk today about the hashtag true tea the price of success from the inside out. And so now that I've given you a little background on me, yes, some of my clients are NBC Universal, LinkedIn, Google, Microsoft, um, George Washington University. Uh, I work with inclusion.co. I am a member of several great groups and I'm just delighted that I live to see this day, you know, because I never, I, did, I didn't think years ago when I tried to take my life that I would be here. So today we're going to give that true tea. We are also going to talk about truly the price of success because there is this myth about the price of success. So let, let's go and let's talk to our esteemed guests. Thank you all for coming here. I'm going to address each and every one of you uh, and you're going to see how. All right. Kia, grand rising, grand rising to you, queen. Marcus, good morning. Royal sister, I love it. Ben A. Hello, everyone. Hello, Ben. Early. Hi from Cincinnati. WKRP in Cincinnati. I should love watching that show. Hey, Early. Great. You're, glad you're here. Marcus, you got to call it. Kill a pitch. Laugh out loud. Yes. Elizabeth. Hello from Boston. Hello, Elizabeth. Glad you're here. LinkedIn user. Hello. Hello. LinkedIn user. Please let me know your name so I make sure that I address you properly. Marcus. Marcus Select, Writer, producer. Love it. Uh, LinkedIn user, entrepreneur and consultant. Great. Early entrepreneur and corporate trainer. I'm ready. Let's put, let's let Dr. Cheryl Wood be ready so you don't ever have to get ready. What? Come on now. Marcus Select, ready. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Hold on, hold on. LinkedIn user, I'm ready. Let's get it. 
Spice, thanks for your video. The question is rather complex. In a perfect world, hard work, skills, integrity, morality, creativity would be factors. But most of us know the sexism, skin color, racism, where a person is born, secret society context, deceit, lies, theft of patents, who is in bed with who, gender and sexual orientation, and which clique has the most power, attainment of physical resources, unfair plus straight up embargoes, treaty, CIA, F F FBA, FBI uh, assassinations. I don't know if I can read all of that. Okay. Thank you, Spice. Ben, I'm from STL, an open innovation product developer. Yes. Helga, good afternoon from Wisconsin. I actually don't know where I fall in all of this, but I'm ready for the tea. Let's drop it. You know we're going in, Hel uh, Helga. Erlene, laugh out loud. You know how we do. Come on now. Hold on, hold on, y'all. Car Buddy app. Hey, Jonathan Cordoba. Bishop Tommy. What's up, Bishop Tommy? Greetings from Bama. Yes. Lakeisha, hello from North Carolina. Glad to have you here, Lakeisha. And then link the user, Marion Segree. I'm so glad that you all are here. Hello from Savannah. Hey, Marjorie. John Smith. Let's roll. That's what I'm talking about, John. Let's get it popping. You will meet you, Amana. Hey. Uh, Bishop, think you're awesome. I think you're awesome too, Bishop Tommy. Okay, everybody. So why are we talking about the true tea, right? Why, why, why are we getting into true tea? The reason why we're going into true tea, the price of success from the inside out. I want to ask you all a question. And I want you to be honest. This is our safe space. This is my show, but it's our safe place to talk to each other. And even though I'm on stream yard and I can't see you, I will acknowledge everyone who writes to me because I believe that that's very important. When I was growing up, I didn't get acknowledgement a lot. And it really made me feel like I, I didn't matter. Why is that important? Have you ever have you ever just been looking on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and you ever looked at people and they always seem like they're winning? They're always in their winning season. Everything is popping for them. They're on vacation. They got the gorgeous man, gorgeous woman. They're winning the corporate contract. They're speaking on this stage with Tony Robbins, Les Brown, Lisa Nichols, all that kind of stuff. Everything seems to be popping in their life. Have you ever, have you ever just sat there and like, how is it that they're doing that? And why is that not happening for you or me? Have you ever felt jealousy? And these are real questions. I need y'all to get in the comments and let me know. Have you ever just sat and looked at people? You're looking at the highlight reel. We all know that. But still, have you ever just been looking on social media and then just came away feeling bad about yourself because you feel like you're not in your you're not you're not in your winning season. You may never have been in your winning season and you feel less than. You may feel a, a pang of you may feel a pang of um you may feel a pang of jealousy. You may feel a pang of um, envy. And so today, I want to, I want to, I want to kind of, I want to unpack that because one of the things that when people come and they see me and they see me getting all these big things, or they see people who seem to be always in their winning season, there's a you, you asking yourself, why not me? Why isn't it my time? Why isn't these big things happening? I keep. You keep praying, you keep doing this, you keep trying to move in a room full of vultures and you can't seem to be um, moving on. And so I want to talk about what's really happening. Uh, so um, for real, so I'm going to ask the question again. Um, and I want you all to be honest with me. Are you watching people on social media who always seem to be winning? Are you seeing people that are balling out. They got everything going for them. The guy, the girl, the dream vacations. They got the Birkin bags. They got all the trappings of success. They're the greatest speakers. They get booked and busy. They, they're doing all the things you want to do. Their products are selling out. Their books are selling out. They're launching things left and right. Everything is going their way. Have you ever just scrolled down your social media and just seen that and then come away feeling maybe envy, jealousy, or maybe just feeling like you're not, you're not good enough? Why is it not happening to you? And I really want to see some comments. I see four, but I want to see more because there's more people on here. And the reason why I'm so interactive is because I'm not a lecturer. I'm not going to I'm not here to lecture you all on, you know, things. I want to have an interactive discussion because to be quite honest with you, that was me most of my life. Most of my life, I used to look at others who seemed to have it going on, who got into the Ivy League institutions, 
who came, who had the contacts, who had the money, the girls, the guys, they had the vacations, they had the homes, they had everything. Everything they did looked like it, it was so wonderful. It was so perfect. And I wondered, would that ever be me? And then getting mad at myself that why, why was I born the way I was born? Why did things happen the way they happened? And I want to have that conversation today. Because as someone who's on the ascent, there are many misconceptions about how people do it. I can't, I can't speak for everybody else. I can only speak for me. And so I want to have a real conversation about losing seasons and winning seasons and what really happens on the road to success. And it's not always what you think. And so let me go into the comments to see what my peeps are saying. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Marcus Sellette, yes. No jealousy because celebrating others is what I do. Thank you, Marcus. To thine own self be true. Love it. LinkedIn user, yes. Eula, when I see them, I always feel like I'm not doing enough that I'm lacking, but I know I'm a boss. I wonder if I'm missing connections or not networking enough. Why them and not me? See, I like that because a lot of people will come on here with platitudes like, oh, I would never do that and secretly be seething on the inside. I want to have a real conversation. I'm not here on some BS. I want, I want to have a real conversation because there's a lot of things that people will say out loud that they don't truly feel in their heart. I have felt jealousy, envy, anger. I'm keeping it a buck with y'all. I'm keeping it a buck. I'm keeping it a buck. Did I, did I say nasty things to these people? Not at all. Not at all. But I'm telling you what I felt on the inside. Rage and stuff like that. Okay. Ibrahim, you said Ma Ma Marjorie Glover. Thank you. Hold on. Not jealousy, just wishing I had more courage to do the same thing. I love it. I love it, LinkedIn user. Well, hello and best wishes. How are we defining winning? I do connect with the comment of feeling like I'm not doing enough. Winning could be, so winning could be whatever you deem to be successful. For me, if people are speaking on the stages I want to speak on, if they're on business shows, they, they're on the cover of magazines, these are, this is what my version of success is. You know what your version of success is. Do you want to be known as the industry leader? Do you want to be first when they call, when they need to understand a particular topic or something like that? I'm in a service-based profession. I'm a pitch master. So I create killer elevator pitches, media pitches, investor pitches, speaker pitches, interview pitches. I'm also an international professional speaker and a corporate trainer for some of the biggest companies in the world. So that we're coming from my lens on what success looks like to me. But if, as far as winning, what does winning look like to you? And, and think about that, Midge. Thank you. Okay, hold on. Lakeisha, yes, feel like I'm maybe I'm not doing enough or what can I do better? I love it. Erica Swanson, feel like I'm not doing enough. Like, what am I missing? Keep it a buck, queen. Glad you're here. Helga, I have seen it, but I also know someone who only posts what looks good just for social media. Yes, that's true, too. I know some personally in life really isn't that grateful. Keep it a buck, Helga. To some, it's to, it's to disguise their misery. Never jealous. Thank you, Helga. It's Midge, it does often seem like there are seasons where they are dealt a fairly consistent, where we are dealt a fairly consistent poor hand, both professionally and personally. That does happen, queen. Christine, no jealousy either. I know I need to, to network more and be more extroverted in business job. Thanks, Chris. Okay. And then we had Daryl. Great stuff. Thanks, Daryl. So let's get back to it, y'all. Let, let's, 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 let's truly get back into it. Let me come off of this for a second. So in talking about the, the true T, the price of success from the inside out. So as a woman who has, <clears throat> when I was growing up, as some of you know, I was always told I was ugly. I was stupid. I would never make it. I would never be anything in life. Oh, uh, you know, who did I think I was? I was going to live and die in the hood and stuff like that. And so we've heard that story before, right? We've heard that, right? Uh, what, what really bothered me was that I felt that my parents just didn't care about me. And so I so wanted to prove to them that I was worth it. I was worth being born. I was worth it. And for a large majority of my life, I didn't feel it because they did they they didn't care. Or in my opinion, they didn't care or they couldn't understand that the true star was in their home. But they focused on outward appearances and what society said. So that that caused a deep pain in my heart. And so what I did was I became the best at everything that I did. So when I would go to school, I would be the best speller, the best communicator, the best this. I was in um 
not genius level, but I was in the special programs for talented underrepresented minorities or whatever. Talented, right? And I came to life at school, but when I went home, I was so upset because I had to sit in my room and just sit there with no one to talk to, to be punched and embarrassed by my mother, to be mistreated and just, so it was a very difficult childhood. When my grandparents stepped in, as many as you all know, my grandmother saw a gift in me that no one else until that point had ever seen. She thought I had the gift of speech. And she said, when you speak, people listen. And that's not normal. My grandmother had an eighth grade education. So my grandmother nurtured the, my speaking. And luckily, and luckily, the very thing that used to get me into trouble and get paddled in high school, uh, paddled in, in grade school was the very thing that was going to set me free. So I've been a speaker since I was 16 years old. We all know this. Went to law school, got kicked out of Georgetown University Law Center 20 years ago. And that's something that broke me for five years. Even though I was at another law school on a full scholarship, I was at Rutgers. Had a nervous breakdown at Rutgers. Just felt like I would never, I was just never meant to be anything. However, you know, I graduated, I did my thing, I did my thug dizzle, became an attorney in the great state of New York, you know, worked at Sullivan and Cromwell, clerked for federal judge in the Southern District. Like, so these things are great, yet I still didn't feel good. Things looked good, but they didn't feel good. And it wasn't only, it was until I, you know, quit my legal positions as an attorney and started to kind of work on what it was that I was put on this earth to do. Started a lingerie company no one believed in, and y'all already know this. And through that company, I learned that I'm a pitch master for real. So pitching my way onto television shows and stuff like that. The very same people that said I was too fat, too black, didn't have an Ivy League degree who said I would never make it are now the same people looking at me like, how in the world is that possible? She, This is not Lizzo. This is 2010, 2011. This is a very, you know, it's a very dark time in my life, but a very positive time in certain ways because I had to prove to myself that the vision that God placed in me was worth it. Did people believe in me? No. Did people say, oh, you're guaranteed for greatness? No. But I had to trust the vision that God placed in me as a young person, right? Okay. So life took off, became successful, started getting on television shows, started doing all, I mean, all these things sound great. But the truth is, I didn't feel like I deserved it because I didn't look the way people said I should have looked. I didn't sound the way people said I should have sounded. And I squandered opportunities because I believe that it should go to people who everyone thinks it should go to. The pretty girl, the one with the connections, the one this and that. I didn't think I measured up, so I couldn't understand why I was getting these opportunities. Again, it looks like the winning season. It looks like it. Because I'm getting booked and busy. I'm getting this and that. I did it by sheer power um, and, and utilizing my talents and my skill set. And it worked until it didn't. And before I knew it, I was a severe alcoholic. And I was freaking homeless. I had a losing season. I had a long losing season. So as you can check my resume, it says Shark Tank and all of that stuff. That's great. But it didn't tell you how dark that period of time was. It didn't tell you about me and my business partner, just whatever. But it also didn't, didn't talk about when people saw those great things, they didn't know what the, 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 the true price of success. And it's not easy. As much doubt as I had in myself, there was the doubt I was carrying from other people all my life. And so to numb the pain and to deal with my imposter syndrome, I drank, I drank, I drank, I drank, and I drank. And by the time it was over, I squandered every opportunity under the sun. The things y'all see me doing today could have happened six, seven years ago. But I didn't believe I deserved it. Because you know what? In my mind, I was still losing. Even though the greatest opportunities were in my face, I didn't think I deserved it. So let's talk about the price of success. When you see all these people who had these great things, what did Mergy say? Uh, 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 I probably had the name wrong. Some people will only post their highlight reel because their lives are really not like that. You are seeing snapshots in time. Things may have been great in that moment, but what is the rest of the other 23, 
hours and 30 minutes look like? For years, I was homeless. For years, I was building myself up. For years in that Christ-centered life transformation program, God was getting me right. He binded up my wounds. He made me see that I am worth everything. And it didn't matter about my achievements, my accomplishments, and all this other kind of stuff that people seem to think about. Those are the outward trappings of success. But what about the inner work of success? Do you want to know why so many of these Hollywood people are on drugs, alcohol, bad relationships, devastating decisions? It's because secretly they don't think they belong where they belong. And all the makeup, all the plastic surgery in the world has not healed their soul. For all the people that told them it was impossible, for all the people who told them they weren't good enough, for all the people who said, and somehow they managed to get there, but they're still trapped in that, that story from way back when. And the reason why I'm having that conversation with you all right now is because we've all had losing seasons. And some seem to last longer than others. I was in a losing season for the first 15 years of my life. I cursed every day my life on this earth. From 15 to 18, great. Um, going to college, that was great. Going to law school, not so great. Um, get, you know, Getting kicked out of a school, having a nervous breakdown in another. Starting my first company when no one believed in me. And I kept going because I just kept figuring it was going to happen. But when it did happen, when the success hit me, I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't ready for people to treat me differently. I wasn't ready for people to just be like, I don't know how she did that. She don't even look good. That, like all sorts of things, which exacerbated the stuff in my mind. I didn't believe I deserved it. And so you know what I did? I reverted back. To believing I didn't deserve it and I let things go. Things that could have propelled me into the stratosphere. So the true price of success from the inside out. Let me know how you're feeling about what it is that I'm bringing to the table because I have more to talk about. I just wanted to, I, I, I want to have that conversation about everything that glitters ain't gold. Every opportunity isn't good. Everything you see on social media is can be smoke and mirrors. You might be in the season that you're being prepared for your greatness. And it's going to be ugly and it's going to be uncomfortable. And it almost feels like you're in quicksand. But when you do that upward trajectory, everything you've gone through will make you so much stronger than the person who never went through it. And all I can do is look at you in awe. So I'm going to check back with my esteemed guests. I want to know if this is resonating with you all. I'm not here for platitudes. I'm not here to tell you, oh, it just happened overnight. No, it did not. Mine is a 42-year-old story. And so I want to get into losing seasons, winning seasons, and what the price of success is from the inside out, not from the outside in. Everything that looks good is not what it is. I promise you. Okay, hold on, y'all. Let me let me just go. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me just make sure. I feel like if they can, so can I. Get it, boo. Christine, any tips on being more extroverted and gaining prospects? I do, Queen. Just let me get through the topic that I'm going through right now, and then I'll answer your question, Christine. Okay. Brother Lance Jones, great info. Hey, Lance. Mar Marcus, when I was in my 30s, I felt that way. It took me two decades to comprehend who I was and recently learn I'm ever evolving. Yes, because I know what it's like to succeed because of who I was in covenant with. With I lost it all. Now I'm going to come back. Get it, because that's exactly what happened to me. Marcus, say that. Ben A, the one thing I always wonder, why is it so hard for Blacks to build together? Such an, such an age-old question, but you will actually be surprised. You know, most of my individual clients are black women. I know I have a lot of corporate clients that aren't fronted by black women, but I'm here to tell you, there's there have been a lot of people along the way who've shown me nothing but love and watch, watch me grow, go. I even have a woman in my inbox this morning who I've known, black sister, beautiful. Her name is Gracie. When I tell you she dropped some tea on me today about an opportunity that she's putting into place for me, I didn't even ask her. She black. She's esteemed and she's wonderful. And I'm so thankful that I get to big her up. Gracie Jones, opulent events. Marcus, yes. 
Yeah, Marcus Select, your testimony is always worth repeating. Yes, Spice Curry is all good, sister. Stay in touch. Word. And your earlings, hugs to you, sister. Hugs to y'all. Hugs to all of you. Erica Swank, this is good. Thank you for sharing this. Yes. Renee, that's my girl, Renee. Transparency is why you're an inspiration. I love you, Renee. Thank you. Helga, blessing to you for this message. You have no idea who you are touching right now with this message. Thank you, Helga. Some people took a lot of short course faking growth. You better believe it. But you know what, Marcus? If I'm going to keep it a bug, years ago, I did the same thing. Ow! And I'm like I said, true tea. I ain't going to lie to y'all. I did a lot of the very same things that we're talking about, because, and it didn't get me far. Christine, thank you for sharing this. You're a beautiful and strong woman. Don't let anyone tell you different. Thank you, Christine. Okay, hold on. Let me just, Spice Curry, I don't measure by money. I measure by how I positively impact my community, my children, wife, friends, and planet. Money is an illusion. Okay, Spice. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Marcus, capacity to handle success is critical. And a lot of us aren't, I, I will say this, Marcus, a lot of us think we're ready for success. But it comes with a whole bag of tricks that most people don't know. Like I, I sit and look at celebrities who are constantly attacked online by people who say they're not pretty, they're not this, they're not that, da, 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 da. that. That takes a toll because these are people you don't even know making judgments on you, be, but, but 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 think they want to trade places with you. Mm -mm. There'll be family and friends that'll come out of the woodworks to trash you, bring your skeletons out of the closet. Success ain't what you think it is. It, it's not. Helga, I've had a couple of losing seasons and I have yet to give up. Get it, boo. It's giving, it's because giving up is not an option. I keep faith because I know God got me all day, every day. Stephanie Jones. True. You know it, Queen. Marcus, price of success must be built on a healthy self-concept of who you are. Good, bad, and the great and solid acceptance of yourself. Get it, boo. Um, Lance Jones, I hear you loud and clear. I went through some of the same stuff. I grew up in the slums of Newark, New Jersey. You know, that's why I went to law school. Newark, New Jersey, Lance. Now I own a business to help all our people in Africa. Get it, boo. Kimberly, confirmation of some things I'm dealing with. You know I love you, Kim. Tina! Relationships matter. That's my girl, Tina. Love you, Tina. Earlene Dula, what's hit me the most is your vulnerability that comes with you telling your story. I have my vulnerability except for my husband. Listening to you now makes me think I don't let outsiders see the real me. Give it to him, girl. Give it to him raw. That's been my. That's been one of the secrets to my successes. I refuse to hide. I refuse because the skeletons are going to come out anyway. Be like Martin Lawrence, run, tell it. Marcus, it's the season of black and brown people, and especially women. We are always royal. Get it? Unapologetically, you. That's why I love you for life. Hashtag legend. Do y'all know what it's like to the gentleman who asked why black people don't work together? If you see the people in the comments, they're black. They're not pulling me down. Tina has always been there with me. When you have a sister who calls you legend every time she talks to you, she calls me a legend. Not just I'm great, I'm a queen, a legend. Don't get no better than that. Darling, fact, facts. Serenity, courage, and wisdom. Thank you, Andrea. Okay, y'all. So to get back to the topic at hand, to get back to the topic at hand, the price of the test from the inside out. Okay, so y'all know I was homeless, garbage cans, all that kind of stuff. So I was in this program. I walked out of the program, and a, a wonderful pastor and his wife invited me to live in their home. And it has never happened in the history of our program. So there were a lot of great things that happened, right? But the pastor one day sat me down and he said I wasn't living up to my potential. And I have to admit, yeah, I cried because he saw so much more for me than just working or just barely getting by, or just taking any opportunity. That next day, I put pedal to the metal. I started booking, speaking gigs, asking for my real rate, stuff like that, right? And it started happening. And then it kept doing it. And then like people I had known who had been right beside me, I started going, I started going back to um, people who knew me prior to my Shark Tank days and letting them know what really happened in my life, how I fell off. I, I could use their help. And I was very specific in asking for help, y'all. And do you know what they did? There are people in New York City who got me a speaking engagement with the consulate for the Philippines, got me featured in a Wall Street Journal. Book me at Viacom. Book me in style magazine. Book me in front of these big time places because I asked and I was transparent about how I fell off. I was off social media for two years. They it didn't mean nothing to them because I came correct. I told them the truth. I didn't give them some some. Well, you know, you know. That. No, I said I was homeless and I was an addict. I'm coming to you for real because. I don't know what else to do but to give it to you real and raw because God told me to keep it real and raw. 
And because I started keeping it real and raw, it opened doors because people could see the God in me. Not the fake glitz and glam, not the Birkin bag and anything like that. They saw the realty. And so when I tell you God opened doors that people said I would never be able to do, that's a lie. Last year, I spoke at the LinkedIn um, conference, Transform Her. Got a standing ovation. They bought all my books, threw money at me. Uh, uh, A television producer walked up to me and said, we'd love to have you on our network. And guess what? We're working on my television show. Please believe. And do you know why? Because even at LinkedIn, I kept it real and raw. I told them I, I told them about pitching and communications. But at the very end, I wanted to talk to the women who sat in the room and just looked at all these women with their Fendi and their Gucci and they, they looking good. But I want to speak to the woman who didn't believe in herself because she didn't even know why she was there. I want to speak to her and tell me I was just like you. A year ago, I was homeless. And I'm on this stage as LinkedIn. Can it happen to you? Yes, it can. I was in my losing season so long, I never believed it could go like this. But it did. God made that happen. He turned my doubters into believers. And I'm going to keep it so real with y'all. When I was at that LinkedIn conference, there were people there who literally told me to my face I wasn't shit. I would never be back. And here we are face to face. And I'm, I'm speaking. I'm speaking. In fact, After my presentation, it got back to the big wigs at LinkedIn that I smoked it. I smoked my time. And y'all, I I want y'all to be the first to hear this. I received an email this morning from LinkedIn that I'm speaking at their, their Transform Her conference. They booked me again this morning. It wasn't connections. You have to take advantage of these opportunities. And and think about this. Just because other people can't see this opportunity doesn't mean you can't. There are people who would love to be asked to help you if they knew what the specific help would be. If you need a warm introduction, ask for it. If, If they need you to get it together, ask. A closed mouth does not get fed. You may think that your mistakes are going to hold you back only if you let them. When you tell the truth, you free other people. And until you step into your purpose, another woman or man can't step into theirs. When you think about Barack Obama, there wasn't a black president before him. So he had to be the trailblazer. He had to get cut up in all of that. So other people know what's possible. I'm a trailblazer and a visionary. So I've been cut up, bruised, beat up and all sorts of things. But I have to make it easier for other people. So people want to come at me with all the shit I've done that's wrong and all the mistakes I've made. Keep it coming. Because at the end of the day, God made me new. And I apologize for everything that I've ever done. But his vision is so much bigger than what the world thinks of our mistakes. Until you know for yourself that you are not bound, you are not the sum total of your mistakes, you'll always stick in the background because you're afraid people are going to throw it up. Throw it up. Toss it up as as two boxes. Toss it up. My purpose is not tied to my past. My future is in the vision that he gave me and my purpose. I was supposed to make mistakes and all that kind of stuff to show the goodness of the mercy of God and that your purpose supersedes all mistakes. Your doubters will be believers. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but I fear no evil because you're with me. You comfort me. You lead me beside the still waters. Still waters that we didn't believe that we could have. Some of us are in this mindset that I, I, I messed up so bad I don't deserve. You deserve all that and then some. All that and then some. Let me go to my peeps. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. Facts! Happy Sunday. Love you. I love you, Kelly. Y'all know my girl, Kelly Charles Collins. She's the CEO of <clears throat> Ladies Who Leverage, which is, a, which is a women's group. We collaborate source in that group. Check it out. Kelly, you know what to do. Put the link in the, in the comments. And we work with helping each other and just being there for each other. Do y'all know what Ladies Who Leverage, I can put, I can, I can text Kelly. 
and send it to our crew and it's nothing but love. We always try to help each other, right? And we believe in paying each other for our, their services. Don't we, Kelly? Marcus, I interviewed you in Atlanta. You did, Marcus? Darling, you know what? Facts! Show me the money. Cuba Gooding Jr. Energy. Yeah. Or, or that commercial. What what? What a money reside, what a money reside, what a money reside, what a money reside. It resides in you being honest and truthful about your ascent. Give him the, the, the glory and the honor. Hey, Sean, I don't know what that is, um, but thanks for the link. Tina, asking it shall be given. Yes. What did Tina say? A closed mouth doesn't get fed. Get it, boo. Okay. Darling, preach. Marcus, yes. Marcus, when did you interview me? Margaret, that's great. Darling, my queen, Marcus. Yes. Erica, congratulations, sis. Yes. Tina, but God had a plan, not your plan, but his will be done. You are walking in your purpose. Blessings on top of blessings, freely flowing. Get it, boo. You know how we do in these streets. Christine, price of success is more than a person's character that will get them through and persevere. It is grit. Y'all know how I feel about grit. Based on Angela Duckworth book. Get it, boo. Congratulations to anything is possible with God's plan. Anything. Nothing is impossible or out of reach. Cry. Love. I hear you. Let's get it. Uh, Carl. Amen. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. Sometimes it goes fast on me. Okay. Lance. Yes. Carl just preach Queen Lance. That's right. Um, darling, Trey, darling, kill a pitch. Method. You better. That's my name. Don't wear it out. Um, you better preach that. Carl just God bless. Helga. Yes. You are preaching this fine Sunday. Thank you, Lance. Safe, secure, worldwide. Bodyguard, protection services, forces. Get it, boo. You know we love it. Uh, Tina was supporting. It's so very important, not just to the person you're supporting, but by the supporter as well. Yes. Marcus, at a conference. Okay, y'all. And so before I go any further, as you all know, I'm the killer pitch master. And I'm always looking for ways to show y'all how to become more visible, to stand out in a crowded marketplace. And everything like that. So I have a free quiz that I would love for you all to take. You and we take the quiz. It's called Pitching for Profit, and it's all about what's your next pitch power play. And you will get if you take the quiz. It's like six questions, six short questions. You will get a customized report which will show you how to start moving differently as you're pitching yourself for bigger and bigger opportunities. For some of y'all, you might be like, "Oh, well, you know, I just play it safe. I don't play it safe." So you know how some people are like, oh, "I'm gonna do hyper local media." When I first pitched, I pitched to MSNBC and got on their show. So that's that's national. So think about it like this. Still big, still little, still big. If you're going to like when you're younger, you're like, I'm gonna get in trouble for being 15 minutes. Like, might as well be 45. Enjoy yourself, you know, because it's gonna be bad anyway. So anyway, what I'm really saying is I want to teach you how to start pitching yourself differently. And you can use um transparency and vulnerability. And you can do it in your own way. You don't have to tell it all like me, but just make sure that there are people who are so hungry for, for, for the not fake stuff anymore. Some of us will never know the surgeons for some of these celebrities. I'm okay. It, listen, I ain't got no six pack abs, y'all. Y'all already know how it is in these streets. So I'd love for you to take my free quiz. And here is the quiz. Um, you can go to website, www.pitchingforprofit.com. If there's anyone in the audience, please let everybody... Um, if they can't, like, uh, click on it right there, put uh, pitchingforprofit.com so people can take the quiz. I would really appreciate it if you take the quiz. It is free. You do get a free customized report. And what it will really do is shock you on being so right about how you, how you, how you are in the world and what can make you better in pitching yourself. And remember, pitching is what we do every day. Every single day you're pitching. If it's to your friends, your family, to your job, your coworkers, your supervisors, whatever. You're pitching. You want them interested in what you're saying and going to the next level. So as long as you keep that in mind, this will show you how. This will show you how. Okay. And also, I am the best selling, I'm the number one best selling author of the Bad Bitches and Power Pitches book series. I wrote these books for women, especially, but men have bought it and loved it too. But my book series is all about showing you how to pitch in your own way. You don't have to be gregarious like me. You can be a quiet storm or anything like that. So there are two links. There's one pitchingforprofit.com. And if you want to learn more about my books, Bad Bitches and Power Pitches for Women Entrepreneurs and Speakers Only, come see why I was the number one bestseller that I had a billboard in Times Square, was reviewed by Forbes magazine. 
And I'm about to drop some tea on y'all that I'm really going to be shocked by. So let me go back to my peeps. Okay. Drake's track, Blessings. Yes, S-I-B in Atlanta. I'm not sure if I remember that. It's a small business expo. Um, ben, this is wonderful. Now, where can I find these people? I need help, not a handout. I I, I don't get handouts. Congratulations, my sister. So far, I'm a product developer. I have a deal. I'm trying to get licensed. Okay, Queen. Okay, okay, King. Got it. Lance, here's my open invitation to my new show on Facebook, Melanin Live. I love it. Melanin Live. I love it. Christine, preach. Lakimja. Hey, Queen. Back gut secret. Authenticity is important. Tina, that's what I'm saying, Queen. www.pitchingforprofit.com. Tina Williams, it won't work for me. Tina, um, hold on. Let me see. You know, I can't do it. I'm in the middle of a thing. Um, uh, let me see. Queen uh, Lakimja, uh, just type in pitchingforprofit.com and see what pulls up, Queen. If it's still not pulling, because I'm, it's on my, it's on top of my bar and it's working, but I just want to make sure, okay? Open for connecting and helping others. The link is not working. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. You know how we do. Wait, pitching for profit. Y'all, I just did the link. So just. Don't even put the www in it. Put pitchingforprofit.com. Just put it in and let me know if it works because I just did it right then and there and it just pulled up. Okay. And I just put pitchingforprofit.com. Okay, everybody. So again, I think one of the things that why this, this conversation is so important is because you're watching people in their winning seasons. Some of them, not all of them. Some of them are just fronting because they they listen, their lives are so horrible, but they got to make you believe in something that's not. I don't, I don't, I don't have to do that. And I don't believe in doing that. When people know, when people can see the real, that's when you really start your ascent. I think that's why people like Cardi B, because even though she has all of that stuff, she's still that girl from the Bronx, from uh Dykeman. She's still that girl. And you may not like how she moves and everything, but who do you like? Who who do you like that they done everything perfectly? Nobody. It's understanding success and knowing that it changes you, but also people's expectations start to change around you that have nothing to do with you. All of a sudden, you're expected to be perfect, and you're not, and you were never perfect. That's Jesus. And so, again, success is not easy. It is worth it. It is worth getting out of your own way and not allowing mistakes of the past to hold you forever. There will be people who will never forgive you for mistakes. There are some people who will never rock with you. But you have to understand that those were people were there for a reason, a season, but never a lifetime. Your your purpose is not tied to them. Your purpose is tied to God. And sometimes those mistakes that we have made ultimately change the trajectory of history. Right. None of us are perfect. So get that out of your mind. Some of us weren't born with connections. We just made it happen because we have a gift and a talent and an ability. And I truly, truly, truly love you all. And I just want to share that with you. Never forget that. I'm going to have to go in about a minute, but I just want to share this with you. Okay. It's working when we type it in. Okay. Glad. What's up? What's up, Mo? Pete, this is my first time catching you over here. Spit that shit. You know how we do. Okay. So Tina Williams, pitching for profit slash questions. Love it. Pitching for profit. Got it. Lakichma, pitching for profit slash quest. Wait a minute. Is that what it is? Because I just put in pitchingforprofit.com. I don't know what question. Wait. Let's see. Anyway, thank y'all so much for being here for me. If you liked this, if you like this show, keep coming back every Sunday. This is Keeping It Real with the Killer Pitch Master. And I'm so happy to be here with all of you. You can check me out on LinkedIn every Sunday. My website is www.perfectpitchesbyprecious.com. Come check me out on LinkedIn. I'm Precious L. Williams, Killer Pitchmaster. Um, please check out my website. Check out my books. Uh, check out pitchingforprofit.com and just go in, y'all. Go in. Go ham and cheese. I literally have a meeting to go into right now. Please like, comment, and share this with your network. Let people know why they should come here every Sunday because I'm going to drop that T. And remember, success, let's do it from the inside out, not from outside in. You're worth it. Go get it. Go get your blessings. And remember, as Mary Mary says, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking. You keep walking with your head held high. Go get your blessing. Love you all. Mwah.
And then we have Lakeisha. Ah, thank you. I'll be at that. I'll be there again this year, Queen. And then thank you. Keeping it real. Thanks, Precious. I love you all. Bye.